sometimes with figures, you gotta buy it to try it. And today we are doing just that because the desktop army figures are a series that I've always been interested in, but never purchased because the price point's just sort of whack. So today I figure we do two birds with one stone. Desktop Army Volume 21 is of the heavily armed high school series. I rather like these, and I've always been tempted to buy the Figma, but I never quite did. The concept is just that this one artist draws all these cute high school girls with tons of crazy weaponry. I don't see how you could go wrong. And in this series of Desktop Army, there are three varieties of girls that you can receive from this line. I couldn't figure out whether or not I'm getting all of them in one box, or if this is just going to be one random one. but. I'm hoping for Ichi. Now these are from Mega House, which I feel like I didn't know for the longest time until I'm sitting here looking at the box. And the last posable I got from Mega House was pretty bad. But still, I have high hopes for these because from original designs to Evangelion, they've had a lot of really interesting tie-ins. So let's open this up and see what we get. Um, okay, so I wasn't quite prepared for this. This seems like a bit more of a Gunpla situation. Well, as you can see, there's a bunch of runners here because indeed you are expected to build some of what is to accessorize this figure. And while I may not have gotten what I wanted, this one's still pretty cute. So then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, seven runners and then two little mini ones with just pegs and stuff. So you can call it nine in total, I guess. The feel of the figures is kind of strange to describe. It's pretty smooth, but it doesn't feel cheap. But there's this weird kind of velvety finish on it. I don't know. It looks fine, but I just don't think I was expecting this. Especially for something that has buildable aspects to it. This just doesn't feel like it should be buildable. All right, let's get to these instructions. I can't tell if it's giving me the instructions for everything or what. It looks like it. That's kind of weird. I don't think I need too much instruction here though. All right, now with all the runners out of the bags and I finally found my nippers, we can get started on something here. So let's see what we can do. Okay, so I put the thing together and I have some mixed emotions. So let's take a look. The character that I got is literally just named Two and that's fine, whatever. The character's cute. I like the multicolored eyes, that's a nice touch, and the school outfit is also really cute. The fact that it's so tiny is also kind of a cute little feature. The idea of these being a desktop army is a fun little thing. And as you can see, she is just about three inches, so she is rather small. She's just a little bit bigger than my thumb, which is another cute little feature. And surprisingly enough, I had to build a lot of what's here. Something I didn't like though was the fact that her skirt is in three pieces and you had to attach it separately. Personally, I don't get this because all it does is create gaps. It hooks in the back, which is all affixed to this massive peg that is plugging in right above her butt. But it gets even worse because you further plug stuff into that square, the little ribbon on the front of her uniform. It's green. And that's fine, but the problem is, is it was painted green and you can see where I clipped it, it has a huge black spot on top. This skirt, why does it have to be in three pieces? Why does it affix to the back like this on ball joints? But because of that, it creates gappage if they're not perfectly angled. And I guess it's nice to have the ability to move her legs outward, but I don't know, it just makes it way more cumbersome. Her pigtails were really hard to attach. I had to blow dry the head to get it warm enough to get the plastic malleable. But once they're in, they can move around on a ball joint, which is fine. I mean, they don't really need to. This thing is mostly composed of ball joints though. The head can go up and down, left and right. It can swivel around, which is all nice. The shoulder similarly is a double ball joint, which allows for lots of rotation, up and down, in and out, but really not too much in and out, though the full range of the up and down is fine. There is definitely a joint in the middle, but it's very limited what it can do. But I guess turning her is easy enough, but still not that much because you can see there's a seam here. So the fact that you can't turn her like a lot is kind of stupid, especially because they had to give us joints here to make it so that we could move her legs. So once you joint that out, you can move her leg in and out, but not tons. So I don't get the point still of this segmented skirt, though her knees go up and down on a hinge as do her elbows and there goes her skirt. Her wrists are just simple pegs, I would guess. 
No, her wrists have literally no articulation at all. Well, now that her skirt fell off, you can see that she has a pretty good ability to kick out because of that ball joint, and that's fine, but again, is it really that necessary? Oh, the middle segment of skirt just goes on with a peg. But in addition to this form, she comes with some swappable parts. First, let's do her hair. Once you pop that off, you can add this one, which has a cute little attache in her hair. Very edgy. She looks like she was hit with a ninja star. But it doesn't stop there, because knee here has the ability to detach her legs at the knee. These peg joints then allow for you to attach these honkin' robo legs. Honestly, I couldn't even tell that that's what they were supposed to be at first. Plus, this is multiple parts. The heel, the knee, and the leg are all separate pieces that you had to put together. So then now with the robotic legs attached, she looks pretty darn cool. I actually really like the look of this figure, but man, getting it all together is really difficult. The pegs that attach her legs are segmented at the bottom, like they have that little nub, and it makes them so difficult to take out that I didn't even know if I got them fully attached when I plugged them in. And since the kneecaps are separate pieces, they continue to fall off. It's really, really cheap feeling. Whenever you're playing with this thing, it just falls apart. Pieces keep falling off of it, and it's really frustrating. The figure is decent quality, but then the additional pieces are all model kit parts, which are on runners, so they're cheaper plastic, and thus this thing winds up looking and feeling a bit grosser in certain areas. And God forbid trying to move her legs with the skirt and not making something fall off is so difficult. But it doesn't stop there, because while she looks cool here, there's even more to her. As if she didn't have enough junk in the trunk as it was, we're about to get way worse. This piece would be fine on its own to attach to her back, but I warn you, it gets far worse. This also gets attached. So you plug one into the other, and now you have an entire harness to attach to her butt. And yes, it does attach to this hole here at her waist, not the one in her back, which to me just makes her look really, really dumb. So now all of this is attached at the back. Look at how much of an abomination this is. What is this engineering? They could have easily made this smaller for sure. And for what the effect is, I just don't think it's worth it. It gives her a little bit more width and yeah, it kind of makes it look like she could fly or something, but I don't know, this just ain't it. And on these pegs, you can attach, well, what else? A gun, and not just any gun. She has this little SMG style gun. I don't know, sue me if I'm wrong. Either way, it's a simple attachment of just a little peg and you plug everything together. Cool, I guess. She comes with two of those guns and the second one, well, Get ready for this. It's this massive thing. It won't even fit in frame. So this is her sniper rifle of sorts, though at its core, it's the same gun, but with some extra attachments to it. It's cool, I guess, but this is just going to weigh her down even more. Still, there's one other thing to show you. She comes with a nifty little stand that you also have to build. It's on one of the runners as well, but it comes together pretty nicely. And I think for what it is, it's pretty cool. And parts of it are removable, so you can actually remove this extension and make it just a little bit shorter if you like. Though, for a figure like this, you may want all of the length you can get on that stand. She only comes with one pair of hands, obviously, because they're not swappable nor posable, so these will just go in via the little pegs right here. And it goes on with pretty much no hassle, and since this is that sort of really light model kit plastic, it's not super heavy, so she holds it decently. Something stupid, though, is the fact that despite it having two handles, you can't make her hold it with both hands. I mean, you might be able to finagle it in, but with no wrist movement, it looks so unnatural, and who's going to hold a rifle like that? Especially one this long. Though I will say getting her to dual wield is pretty badass. Overall, I think it looks really cool, it's just that it's really difficult to work with. Okay, so watching this review, you may think that I sound incredibly frustrated, and yes, I am. There's a lot to like about these figures, but unfortunately, there's a lot bogging them down as well. If they were just figures with accessories and a bunch of things to attach, then that would be fine. But the fact that it's sort of buildable really cheapens some of the appeal. 
And I say cheapen when these things are incredibly expensive, and that may be the most offensive thing. These little three inch figures are 20 something dollars a piece. A set of them is typically around $60, though sometimes you can find the less popular ones for a little cheaper. That is a criminal overpricing. You could spend $20 on another kit and potentially even get a full size mobile suit, whereas this, it's just a small figure with a couple guns. While I really appreciate the design, I just feel like there's something here that's missing. If they were cheaper, maybe $10 a piece, I'd say okay, but at their current value, I could never recommend these. I was so frustrated putting this thing together. There's minimal instructions in the pamphlet that shows you what to do, and a lot of it was just guesswork. One cool thing about them is that they're all interchangeable and that you could potentially use accessories from one on another, which is cool, but who's going to spend that much money on all these tiny little figures? The concept of a desktop army is cool, having these little things on your desk fighting each other is great, but when a weapon is twice the length of your character, that kind of defeats the purpose of them being small scale. Now that may just be a problem with this particular design, though I've seen other ones with some pretty ridiculous accessories. Again, I think the figure looks great. It seems to be of decent quality, but there's just a few things that are really ruining it. The fact that there's no articulation at the wrist is a terrible mistake. Would the hands potentially fall off? Possibly, but let me figure that out. Because other parts that shouldn't be falling off, like the kneecaps, are incredibly annoying. Why would they become separate attachments and not the hands? You could have given these things at least a separate pair of hands as well. Having them always have that empty hollow fist just looks dumb. At the end of the day, I'd say these things are worth about 10 bucks, but at their current cost, they are a huge ripoff. And that's why I'm going to give the desktop army heavily armed high school girl, me, a six out of 10. Again, I like a lot of what's here. I like the look, I like the design, and I'm a fan of this particular series, but that's besides the point. Overall, these things are unworkable, hardly poseable, and just annoying to mess with. Not to mention they're some of the most overpriced figures I've ever seen. I'm gonna be completely honest here and just say, Mega House, you suck at posables. The statue game is on point, but both posables I've messed with from Mega House have been very bad. I'm not sure if more recent stuff has done better, but I'm not impressed and I don't think I'll be buying any more. But what do you guys think? Have I been too mean to this figure? I know it's small and cute, but damn is it annoying. Do you have any of these? Are the newer ones better? Let me know in the comments below and like the video if you did indeed like it. And of course, as well, if you wanna order any of these desktop army figures, you could probably get some over at Hobby Link Japan. I have a link for them and if you use it, I get a little bit of a kickback in commission and you spend no extra to get the cool figures you want. I'm gonna link another review on screen for you to check out. And even if you've seen it, clicking it may make you seem cooler to people around you. But with all that, thank you so much for watching. Have an amazing day and keep on collecting.